everybody. It's me again, you know who, Dale Comstock. You can tell by the ugly face. Again, calling from New Orleans. Um, so, yeah, in case you're new to this, uh, this is the first segment you're watching. Just go back a little bit, you'll see why I'm in New Orleans, what I'm doing here. And uh, actually, I'm actually sitting in my car uh, making videos right now, getting paid to watch, you know, client's property, which is right in front of my car. So, um, anyways, maximizing my time is what I'm doing and uh, creating some uh, some instructional videos for uh, everybody out there that's uh, interested in uh, learning a little bit about uh, mindset, combat mindset, and uh, some of the uh, philosophy that I live by. So, in the previous section, I talked about, uh, uh, I was, I, this is about principles of, uh, or tenets of combat, right? The four tenets of combat. These are my four tenets, okay? And uh, last time I talked about surprise, or speed, I'm sorry. So I said, if you're gonna get in a fight, be first. Do on the other guy before he does it on you, speed. Um, today what I'm gonna talk about is um, the next principle, or the next tenet, which is surprise, okay? Again, um, when we talk about surprise, when combat, whether it's with a firearm, whether it's with uh, empty hands, whether it was a, with a, um, you know, with a knife, or whether it's a, a linear object, a stick, or whatever, um, these principles, of, you know, they all apply. So the second one is surprise. Last time I said speed, okay? Be first, be fast. Second one is surprise. Do on the other guy before he knows what's happening, okay? Be surprised, surprise attack, okay? If you know you're gonna get in a fight, okay? Don't wait for the other guy to swing at you or, or jump you or anything. Take the initiative. Um, nothing worse than, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting to let the other guy initiate and then he knocks you out or kills you. By the way, he I've seen it happen, okay? Um, or he hurts you very badly. Um, why wait for that? If you know it's going to go to it's going to go to combat, then be first. Surprise the guy. Okay, do unto him what he's going to do unto you, but just do it first. Okay, be unexpected. So how do I surprise guys? I mentioned last time. You know, I'll do things like maybe uh, spill a drink in a guy's face. You know, I'll set it up with a drink in the face, and then maybe follow up with you know, it could be a punch, form strike, it could be whatever I want it to be. I might spit in his face. Um, you know, I could, you know, maybe, uh, you know, throw a, a knee strike to the groin, whatever. Um, you know, maybe feign a move like, okay, I'm, I'm going to walk away. Like, hey, man, I don't want none of this. Bam, I freaking hit him. Um, you know, basically, I have to surprise my opponent. I want to hit him before he knows what's actually happening. And as he's, again, I want to, I want him to be in my OODA loop. I mentioned that last time, to observe, orient, decide, and act. I want him to be in my OODA loop, okay? I want him to be figuring out what in the hell is going on and why he's trying to figure out what's going on. He's trying to figure out what he's going to do, all right? He's trying to make the decision to do whatever it is he wants to do, and he's got to do it, act on it, right? So um, while he's going through that whole process, okay, it's a cycle, um, I'm already acting on the guy. I'm already imposing my will on the guy. Um, it doesn't matter if it's with a firearm or a knife, a stick, or whatever it might be. Um, I want to impose my will. I want to put this guy in my OODA loop, so I want to surprise him. I want to be fast, and I want to surprise the guy. Keep him, keep him way outside the mindset. Um, it's the same principle of close quarter battle, CQB, right? Speed, surprise, violence of action. Um, we want to, we want to enter the room quickly. Um, we want to, we want to surprise the adversary. How do we do that? Well, a lot of times we do it with explosive charge. We blow the door open. The guys are like, oh my God, what happened? Um, and while he's going, oh my God, what happened? You know, we're already shooting him. We're faster than he is, right? Um, and we're going to do it violently. Um, so, you know, surprise, surprise the guy, um, catch him off guard. And when you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to put him in what's called stress shock phenomena. Okay. And there's a, there's a, <clears throat> It's a physiological response that we go through when we go through stress shock, when we go through fight or flight. And uh, in this phenomenon, what happens is this. Pretend like, or think in your mind, you're, you're cruising along at, you know, in fifth gear, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, you know, ambush, you're, you're being attacked, you're whatever, right? You're surprised. What's going to happen is you're going to have this dip. It's called a general adaption syndrome. So you can basically shift in gears down to third gear, get some power so you can power out and fight or, or run away. So there's a, a momentary um, change, a, a physiological and psychological change that you got to go through to prepare yourself for fight or flight. It's it's that and it's not a lot of time, okay? It's you know it's tenths of a second maybe, okay? But it's just enough to give me as an adversary the jump on my opponent while he's going through this stress shock phenomena and trying to change gears and and 
basically reorganize his mind, his body and everything for combat is too late, okay? Because what happens is in, in this general adaption syndrome, when you have this, this little lull for a moment where you're changing gears, I'm already beating your ass or shooting or killing or whatever. And then you're gonna go into what's called a resistance phase. You're gonna, now you're gonna, this guy's gonna start amping up and, you know, and, and ready to, uh, and ready to fight. I want to catch you in that little uh, in that little uh, depression there for a moment. Um, we use the same effect in Delta Force. When we did um, assaults in a room, we always went in it with explosives because explosives gave us that surprise element, right? Put a guy in that stress shock phenomenon, that deer in the headlights thing, going, oh, what's going on? Well, he's trying to figure out what's going on and make an assessment and then decide what he's going to do and act. It's too late. He's dead, okay? It's, it's over in tenths of a second. Um, and we try to do that all the time. Every time we go into a room, into a building, we always try to, to uh, put our opponents in that stress shock phenomenon. And you can argue, well, how does that happen if you know they already know you're coming, they heard you blowing things up before. Believe it or not, even though they know you're coming, even though they, they know you're coming and you're standing outside the door, you know they're coming in, you can still get to jump on the on your opponent in the room with this this phenomena using explosives and flashbangs and violence of action. It's crazy, but it works. How do I know? Because I've been on that side of the room, um, you know, as basically, in, in, you know, as a role player, as an aggressor, when we did training, we used to use wax bullets and simulations and things like that. And I'm telling you, when you know an assault team's coming through that room, even though you're standing ready to fight, um, it's still very disconcerting and they, and they win every time. You might get one, but the rest of them are gonna get you. It's crazy how it works, but it does work. Um, so speed, surprise, okay, those are your two tenets. And uh, next segment, I'm gonna talk about the third tenant, which is violence of action, so stand by.